Let's begin this conversation first taking our quote from Adam Smith, an economist, who once said, It is not from the benevolence of the butcher, the brewer, or the baker that we expect our dinner, but from their regard for their own interest. Okay? My next quote will be from Albert Einstein, who once said, the hardest thing in the world to understand is the income tax. How so? I'll take my last one. And this one is from David Cameron, who once said, The economy is the start and end of everything. You can have successful education reform or any other reform if you don't have a strong economy. Let's see how this uh, quote relates to what we'll be discussing today. Very warm greetings and welcome to D Conversation. We're reaching you from Kaftan's television studio here in the nation's capital, Abuja. I am Annabelle Oji. Today we'll look at, uh, turn our attention again to the state of the nation and then we'll look at what has been happening, especially in Nigeria's economy with regards to food, shelter, clothing. You keep hearing that the angry man is an, uh, is a, a hungry man is an angry man. But what exactly is happening, especially to people on the street? And then you have... Uh, um, President Bala Metinubu come out to say that regardless of what is happening, the fact that you are able to, you are buying one carton of Indomie for 11,000 Naira, blame it all on me. It is all my fault, but we are going to fix this and we are assuring you again, keep having renewed hope. But then somebody came out to tell me that Annabelle Oji, I need to eat first so that I can have strength to stand on the mandate. Mm. Okay, let's talk about this now. Our right. guest on the show today is Daniel Obaje, who is a public affairs analyst. Great to have you on the show again. It's today. a pleasure to be here, Annabelle. Awesome. Yes. All right, now let's talk about the economy, which yes. concerns yes. every one of us, Correct. regardless of whatever level mm. anyone is. Yes. What is happening in Nigeria concerns all of us. Correct. Now, we see how things keep getting in, uh, expensive. Correct. The last I bought um, Indomie a few years ago was mm. 3000 Correct. 4000 yes. At some point, it got to 5000 yeah. But as we speak, it's over 11000 That's for the small pack. Correct. And then for the big one, you buy it for over 18000 mm. That's if somebody asked me, what is your... Be you, you want to eat Indomie, Abi? <laughs> okay, okay. I don't want to eat Indomie. Let's, yes. let's talk about rice. Right. Over 77000 yes. 80000 depending yes. on where you go to. Even our local rice, so the All same right. thing things are getting more expensive a, a one kilo of meat is five thousand now and then president bala medinibu says that yes i see these things happening even mm. though we recently saw where uh, uh, the emir of kano asked um the first lady to go and tell her husband that Correct. we are suffering Correct. but he says that i've seen this suffering blame it all on me it is all my fault but Correct. i will fix this Correct. how optimistic are you that this fixing will happen anytime soon daniel abaji Thank you very much for having me. My brother, I mean, my sister, I, over time, some of us have resigned to faith that we don't take the government of the day serious anymore. Because whatever they say to you, today, there is nothing on ground to show that they're doing the right thing economically to get Nigerians on track. Now, it will surprise you to know, 2022, the same central bank governor in the person of MFLA, who is undergoing trial now under this government, of course, they told us it's a continuation. The government is continuous. So it's the same APC government that is, you know, the Nigerian people are, you know, have to deal with. MFLA told us that the pyramid of rice that we have seen in Abuja, that the end for, uh, the end to repetition of rice has come. My dear sister, one year down the line, here we are. Local rice in the market today, like you said earlier, depending on the location you are getting your rice from, mm. is selling for 60, 68,000, 70,000. Some places they even say it's 72. Local rice, not foreign. The one that even makes some of us laugh. Recently, they gave directly to custom. Seized rice by customs are being sold to Nigerians. Well, in the other hand, we can give it to Mr. President by saying, Blame it on me. <laughs> At least he's not saying that it is not my fault. That is it. So, if he's telling Nigerians, blame it on me, then what do we expect? Can this government fix it? Can they deliver the renewed hope agenda that they told us about? Of course, for some of us, <laughs> it's laughable. And for some of us, we have decided to cross our hand and be watching. Because... We didn't ask for this government. Those who ask for the government, they have gotten it. We are in need together. What do you mean by you didn't ask for this government? Oh, 
my dear sister, I will not be shy to tell you here, I voted for whom I voted for. I didn't vote for this government. You are not standing on this existing mandate. Not at all. And I will never stand on this kind of mandate. The mandate I want to see, that Nigerians need to stand on, is a mandate that gives people hope. A government that inspired the, the hopelessness of Nigerians that we are passing through. But you have. But these people are not giving us any hope. Okay, you, from you now, you told us that the Emir, the Emir of Kano, a revered Emir of Kano, if you can look eyeball to eyeball to the first lady and say to her, go tell your husband, Nigerians are hungry. My dear sister, go to the street. It is not the saying, Nigerians are hungry. People are hungry, no job anywhere. Our hospitals are not working. Go to the marketplace. Women are finding it very difficult to buy. Where is the fixing coming from? He gathers down the tea and co and then they form a tripartite uh, adversary economic uh, you know, team. These are same people that are doing business within the economy of Nigeria. What advice do you, need? Do you think these people can proffer? But they are the see, entrepreneurs. You, see, my brother, my sister, they need to look in work first and form a very strong economic team. Because this one now, in fact, before now, I think about last week, the, the central bank government and the minister of finance, they appeared at the Senate. I was watching them. And the conversation, I could not take anything tangible from the conversation. And I said to myself, what are these senators doing? If these people can't do the job, let them resign. You can see what is going on in the, in the, in the, in the Middle East. That the Prime Minister of, 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 of Palestine, uh, uh, the Philistine, uh, what, uh, no, not, uh, what is called it now, um, the Gaza Strip, the man resigned. Mm. He resigned because he knows that he cannot provide a solution to tackle the, the, the invasion of, uh, of Israel. In this part of the world in Africa, we need to begin to learn how to resign. If you don't know how to do it, give way there are others who, who are more than willing to do the job. So this is the problem. So there's nothing like reading hope here. Instead, they have come to give us hopelessness. Complete hopelessness. Nothing is working. Do you have light in your home as we well speak? Throughout the night, all of us, we have just farming with farm. Taking showers over three times in the night before they break. Is that the renewed hope we are talking about? When in Bengal State here, people can go to farm and produce here. In Nasarawa, go and hear the killing that is going on in Nasarawa. Daniel Obadja, you didn't start in this government, if you remember. See, we should not be making excuses. The same is government is continuous. And of course, uh, what they call it is the same piece of government we are talking about. And these same people were on ground during the regime of Buhari. They brought Buhari. So they said to us, it's a continuum. So they shouldn't have no excuse to give to the Nigerian people. You, why, are we in go why are people in government? Why do we elect leaders? Why do we hold elections? In order to give our mandate to the leaders that we have elected to govern us. So there is no room for excuses at all. If you can't do the job, quit. It's as simple as ABC. But it's unfortunate this part of the world we don't quit. I hear you talk about um, electricity, and then I remember reading something from um, the uh, the Daily this morning yes. that says, uh, "Okay, I take it from Nigerian Tribune." Mm. Says power drops in FCT as vandals destroy 330 kV transmission line, and I'm wondering. So yeah. that's that's electricity, that uh, heat that you are suffering yeah. because some vandals went to destroy it, and I'm wondering, how do you have vandals destroy something that? It, does it mean that there were, there were no um, enough security in that place or does it mean that the person that's supposed to be manning it is not there and then we are all suffering this somebody is not doing his job obviously if somebody is doing his job that could not happen and then if somebody is not doing the job what do you need to do as a government you fire and they blame it on vandals but some of us had is Nash is grid collapse mm -hmm. how many times with this what is this grid a spirit <laughs> is the national grid collapse? Is it a spirit? Or is it a human being that is responsible for it? Whatever is responsible, why can't we fix it? One presidential aspirant once told us that in Egypt here, that is not Egypt, Egypt, that the population of Egypt that is not up to ours in, in Egypt, that from, from 2000 and, uh, 2010, thereabout, to 2020, 
they moved their power generation from 25 to 50,000 capacity. Mm. Here we are in this country battling with just 3,000 megawatts. 3,000 megawatts. Yoruba people will say, oh my show. Meaning, what is wrong? What is going on? What is wrong with us? Eh? Now, look at uh, Niger State here. We have no business with Honda. Niger State, there are three dams in that place. Those dams are supposed to not only be used for, 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 for electricity, but irrigations. So that we can have, you know, in and out of seasons farming. But what is going on? In fact, the strike of hunger that we that protests were going on over the street started from there. But then the same Niger State said they're not um, going, the same Niger State governor said mm. they're not ready to move food away from their state to other places. And then they stopped it. The, and then you saw that video. Yes, I saw the video. And I was saying to myself, I said, is this man living in his own colony? Is an emperor in his own colony? Is an emperor? In fact, I rank him to be the Julius Caesar of Rome. Mm that it will lead between the federation and you are giving orders that food should not move from Niger state to other state what what an audacity even if you are the civil security of that state is niger different from nigeria from other state in nigeria it's a everything unit how can you give such order if you are saying food should not move from our borders to other neighboring countries i will understand with you mm. do you get it's just like saying that one should not cross from niger, from from Bebe state to to to, to lagos it is not, it's not, it's not called for. Are you getting me now? But don't but, you think that that's the reason why he's trying to stop it? Because he doesn't, uh, they've seen how much food keeps going into other places like Niger and other um, countries. Where, when we that need the food are planting the food, are harvesting it, we're even suffering from hunger. A businessman is looking for profit. But for you to say to a businessman, you must first of all have patriotism. Be patriotic and be committed to the well-being of your people. See, the leaders must show example. If our leaders are living by example and giving us hope, everybody, all hands will be on deck. But when the leader themselves are doing the obvious and you expect your followers to follow suit, it's not possible. It's not possible. All the imported food into this country, who are the ones enjoying it or eating it? It's our leaders. A, a, a government that is insensitive to the plight of the people. We are complaining of food, complaining of uh, uh, electricity, complaining of uh, of uh, of the uh, third subsidy removal that is not placed in 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 a way, in a systematic way that the removal will be in faces. Today, look at where we are. Yet the National Assembly, they are budgeting billions for SUVs that everybody made noise about it. They didn't receive their decisions. The house of the first lady, even though we are told, some of us, we are not lawyers, but we read books. We are told that it is not constitutional. Yet money is being budgeted for the office of the first lady. The office of Mr. President, you heard last time the FCT minister, he said he's going to build the house of uh, the vice president. And that the vice president did a befitting house. In, in, in Canada here, in Canada. There is a particular guest house that's supposed to be reduced. When they send the bill to, to the parliament, the parliament said, no, we can't spend six, about 40 something million dollars. We can't spend it on a, on a renovation. Where others, people are looking for jobs and there is and there's things to be done. Priority. The unfortunate thing that happened to us in Africa, and particularly in Nigeria, is priority. We don't get our priority rights. Right now, as we are talking, what does Nigeria need? What is the cost of all this? The noise on the street. Is the removal of fuel subsidy? When Mr. President made the pronunciation, pronunciation on the day of his wedding in Arigo Square, I said to my friends, I said, "The man is talking tough like Donald Trump of America." <laughs> he, I believe he didn't even know when he pronounced that word. Fuel subsidy is gone. But then all the and every and he hit everybody, even himself in the villa. He hit all of them. Bam! But, but they cannot receive their statement because it has been issued out, and they are not trying to manage it. No. What do you do? Is it, is it, see, this, this pride, this, that is why some people say the African leaders are arrogant. If you make a decision and is not meeting the needs of your people, whom you are elected to govern, what do you do? You reverse your decision. That does not make you cowardly. That does not make, make you, you know, less a president. No. Because
those who have been led, you have been, you know, giving the money for the people. They will tend to their well-being, welfare, security, and whatever will be, bring succor to the people. That, this is your agenda. Daniel Obadja, is there yes. any of the uh, presidential candidates on that list that yes. came out during the campaigns that yes. did not also talk on removing fuel subsidy? They all said the same thing. Even at Chico. But the issue is, we had clearly for some of them who said, it will be done in faces. Not the way this Tunubu administration have done it. He said it will be done in cases in a systematic way that people will not feel the impact. In fact, this subsidy could have been removed since the days of Good Luck Jonathan. But the same way people say we are on the street, even the same Mr. President in Lagos, they shut down Lagos for one week. And that time, persons like the former CPM governor, they, 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 they displaced earlier. He was in law, they were in the town hall meeting in Lagos. Some of us watched it. Trying to convince Nigeria that this is the right thing to do now for the future of our of our, of, of, the, of the nation. What do, they, what do we have? APC with Tunumbude, everybody. No, no, you can't remove fuel source subsidy. That is the only hope of Nigeria. Now they have done it to us. They have removed fuel subsidy. In fact, there is an agitation now that they need to remove even tariffs, the subsidy on tariffs. Ah, electricity. Electricity tariff. My dear sister, if you remove fuel subsidy. Remove that electricity uh, ta uh, uh, you know, tariff. You are finished, Nigerians. If I delight, we are not even saying it. Uh, we are, as we are in this studio now, what are we using? Generator. No light anywhere. There's no light anywhere. So, let the government of the day sit back. Receive their decisions. Because even the palliative, me, I'm not in, I'm not so, I'm not in so sort of throwing out money as in giving people social in intervention funds and what have you. 15,000, 25,000 palliative. What kind of palliative is that? The other day, the governors were led by Osolodo, a man whom I believe should know better. As a sound economist, they were appear before the Mr. President and told Mr. President, please give us two, two billion. The two, two billion. In fact, we have our own social register. Give us that, those, that money. We will go to our state and then do our, pallet, our own palliative. What do we get? I told my friends, I say, ah, if Mr. President, this, they have gave this governor this money. The money is gone. This is invoice. They have come to settle their invoice uh, for the election. They have come to settle their invoice. They collected the two billion, and to today nothing happened in any state. In fact, we are focus and the focus of all the few medias and journalism journalists. It has been on the federal level, federal level, federal government. The states are also our problem. They are doing nothing at the state level. No employment is taking place. Not no palliative is shared anywhere in the states. But then you have the governors are also the major problem of Nigeria. One, there is no autonomy for the House of uh, the State of Assemblies. Two, that is they pocketed them. Now you talk about the, the, the local government councils, where, where they get their, their funds straight from the federal government. Once they come, the state governor will grab it. Development can only happen if you allow local councils to take responsibility out of the local domain. And then we engage with people in a productive venture. Okay. Right now, as I speak with you, nobody's family. Why? Okay. Because kidnappers are everywhere in all around us. Because, uh, let me take you back to some of these states that you said no governors is doing anything. Yes, go ahead. You go to um, or your state where I read uh, there's something on. Okay. Same Nigerian Tribune says Markin Day moves against rising food prices in Oyo mm. as he. Um, meet stakeholders suspend revenue collection on mm. agri produce mm. to provide haulage trucks and tractors mm. that's one yeah. that's in your state yeah, your you state. go to niger state you yeah. have um, the governor mm. uh, who has uh, pro provided tractors and machines and then stated mm. that so and increase the for land uh, farming forest where you have bandits that they've decided to use so they've decided okay let's 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 increase our farming in this at least make it open so that you don't have bandits um, using those forests to kidnap people mm. that's in um uh, niger in state, niger state. Yeah. Now you go to Lagos State, yeah. where you have Babaji De Sowolu re yeah. releasing 1,500 naira food to each local <laughs> government. It's laughable. Yeah, it's laughable. Isn't that a palliative for some, <laughs> some state governors? We are, we are no prisoners. <laughs> it's laughable. <laughs> Very laughable. Now, my dear sister, I will take Lagos State, the last one. Okay. Uh, you mentioned how many thousands? He said 1,500 naira. Lagos State population is compared to three states in Equus. 
three, I mean, three countries in ECOWAS. Lagos State as a whole. I'm giving you the numbers now. Lagos State is comparable to three countries in ECOWAS sub-region. Lagos State as a whole. We are waiting for population census to be, to, be, to be made. But the last census they said to us, Lagos is about 20 to 23 million people. 20 to 23 million people as of the last census. So that number, by now, we have exceeded that number. And here you are giving palliative to only 3,000, 3, you said? No, I said, I said 1,500 Naira each person, food. For how many persons? For every local government only, area. Only lo all each local government area? Yes. So they go to a little 1,000. No, 1,500 per head. Per head. So they go to a little They capture how many persons now? Check your news. How many persons do they capture? I want to have the figure. When, when they go to the local government. Can that cover the whole top 20, 20, 20, 20 million Lagosians that are living in Lagos? In each pali, um, local government. And it's 1,500 naira? Per head. Person, per head. Is it in, for a day or for a week? For ev every week, every day, as as comes, uh, and, and now they're going to bring in um, those mama puts. Yeah. So isn't that uh, creating jobs? It's, it's not creating jobs. It's not creating jobs. Our leaders are short of ideas. They don't have ideas. They don't know what to do. How can you give out one thousand and you are creating uh, mama put jobs as if you are slaves? It's only prisoners that you create a, 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 a shelter of food and say you have the every money go there with your watch and pick food. If they are doing that for the for the homeless, if they are doing that for the vulnerables, if they are doing that for the elderly in our community, it's a welcome development. But people are hungry. But, uh, create jobs. And if you don't know how to create jobs, get out of there. If people are hungry, create jobs. Like I said in the studio here one day, I, I said, like I was saying before you, you got to this point. I said, oh, 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 oh um, uh, Charles Osunoda came with all the governors and they collected two, two billion each. And they went back to their state. Nobody heard about any palliative. My dear sister, I said to my friends, I said, if, the, if Mr. President and the governors, they are sincere to Nigerians, do you know that these two billion multiplied by 36 states, inclusive FCT, making it 37, multiply that you are having 74 billion. If you now bring what we call private sector partnership, and say so you are building about 2,000 houses in each of the state. You have turned Nigeria to a construction site. The bricklayer will be employed. The small artisans that they call iron benders will be employed. The, the carpenters will be employed. The roofers will come in. The tiler will sell his product. Manapu, the so-called Manapu that he's talking about now, will be at the site they are selling. The multiply effect is massive. Not only will Nigerians will be given houses, employment at that level is created. Businesses will begin to boom. You have turned Nigeria to consortium side. By the time you release the second batch, and then maybe they are doing this local government by local government. My dear sister, the so-called palliative will not end up in the pocket of some people. And they now gather people in Lagos and they are giving them 1,500 naira. What can, today Nigeria, what can 1,500 naira buy? No, tell me. I want 1,500 and I'll take you from point A to point B. So, if they don't know what to do, they should look for people that will advise them because that is a perverse solution. But for me, this one is no solution they are providing. You talk oh. about Niger State they, and uh, the Olo, that they provided the uh, tractors and uh, what have you, you know, to, to, to farmers as an incentive. <laughs> My sister Annabella. The only farming structure in Nigeria that is sustaining us is peasant farming. And if you go to all the states of the Federation, even those who say they have big farms and all these retirees, like all the military generals, and some of them, that's where they retire to. These farms, some of them, they don't even come to give up 10,000 hectares. You heard about the Anchor Borrower Program. Mm -hmm. It was politicized. People that got the loan, majority of them. And the few ones that got the loan and utilized it, the flood that came. Mm. During Buhari, swept their, their product away. How do you, it's a natural disaster. How do you get them to pay back to the, to pay back the loan? A CBN governor of that time turned our, our monetary policy organ of financial instrument to what? Commercial bank. And he was dashing out money to his friends and cronies. Somebody could hide that the guys of uh, being a farmer, 
but he has no no acre of farming anywhere that is being given too much money. Now, let me tell you. Daniel, do you know what we need to do to get us off of the problem after this problem? Now you talk about farming. You want somebody to farm. You want people to farm. Mechanized farming and you are bringing tractor tractor with a plow at the back. That is not mechanized farming. Go to other countries of the world like Europe. Look at Ukraine. Ukraine has no oil. The only thing that has sustained Ukraine in these two years of war with Russia is aid and the sale of their produce grains. When the war started, prices of bread skyrocketed. Boom, off the roof. Why? It was later, it was when the war was going on that we got to find out that. Oh, so the wheat, the flowers that is even coming to this country, is not produced by us. It's not even coming from Africa country. It's coming from Europe, Ukraine. Hey, we are finished. Now Ukraine is in trouble. Now, see, when they talk about mechanized farming, no, no state is doing it. It's all peasant farming. Or what, when they buy tractor and they provide the same fertilizer, they announce it on TV. And everybody go there to talk and tell them and say, this government is doing it. He has given us fertilizer, two, two bags, by each, each, each farmer. My dear sister, when I look at the documentary in Ukraine, how they were producing wheat, when you talk about machineries, mechanized farming, if you see their combined harvester, if you see their prior equipment, Daniel, you will know that these people are people who mean business and they are using their resources to provide for their nation. But you not this country. You'll agree that truly room was not built in a day. It, it, but we have been here for 60, 30 years now. A child that is 60, 30 years has been not, a child of 60, 30 years that is not a grown, full grown man with family. With, with everything he needs for, him, for that man to take care of himself and his family and his immediate surrounding, then that man, there is, in our, in our African palace, we say something don't, something don't come up for the person. All right, let's go to other stories. Still on the Nigerian Tribune, Tinubu in Akure, he says that I will ensure fiscal federalism and I won't abandon economy to marauders. That's what he says. And then I saw a particular, another headline that's, talked about um, restructuring where he's bringing back restructuring mm. and I'm happy that we're talking about restructuring yeah. because I remember one time some time ago we've had this discussion on restructuring yes. so now we're coming back to that restructuring again and we're talking mm. about it and then you look on the flip side and yeah. the other news you talk, talk about um, the Orosaya's report that yes. has now been accepted correct now doesn't isn't that doesn't that look like a ray of sunshine to you Daniel Obaje you see it's a good thing on one hand but why bringing that on board now when there is hunger in the land? Solve the first one first. The first problem that is confronting Nigerians now and all Nigerians is for Tunumbu and his administration to solve the issue of hunger and then the issue of tariff that we are paying on transportation now that Nigerians are not finding it funny. Once these two things is solved, some of us, I sit here in this studio, I will applaud him. And Nigerians will applaud him. Nigerians, we are not asking for too much. I know them. I know my people. They are not asking. Nobody in Nigeria. See, sometimes I said to myself, I said, we are the most peaceful country ever. And because of our peaceful nature and our religious nature, our leaders are taking us for a ride. They are taking us for granted. Solve the issue of food first. A man was a man must be alive to, to, to witness restructuring. Like you said earlier, a hungry man is an angry man. Somebody is hungry and you are telling the person, suffer, suffer. Uh, as we just before we type everything will be fine and then i will get uh, we will get uh, nigeria restructured restructuring for us is not a bad thing but are you going to go all hearts with this restructuring be that you are going to dismantle this the way the, the constitution of nigeria is structured right now that all the federating unit will not take charge of their economic viability in terms of what is in their ground if you can say that, then you are talking about restructuring so that all states can develop at their space because there is no state that doesn't have what it takes to develop its own state. Mm. Are you with me now? So, first thing first, or also I report, everybody have talked about it. Restructuring is nice. Even police, state police that they are talking about. Mm. Some of us have even professed little, see, they call it common sense, but no sense that is, you know, productive that is common. But, People are high and mighty. Our political class and our elites. Once you talk to them, they will tell you because you are not offered product. There is nobody listening to you. But the Oxford manual, the Cambridge manual, for all of us, is not working. 
That is why some people are calling now that why is Nigeria listening to the dictator World Bank and IMF? Oibo, what Oibo do? Do what they did to grow their economy and become what they are today. Some of it are proceeds that they took from Africa. Today we are still leaning to, to the white people to get their approval. What are you less a, a, a human being? That you have to leverage on the knowledge of a white man before you, you take care of your own economy. These things are just commonsensical. Very simple. Like somebody say, if you create police, state police, the governors will hijack it. Hmm. No, we are a civilized and a honest society. No, we are that you can create state police and structure it in such a way that the governors have no powers over the appointment of the commissioner. Or police within that state that will have you know uh, uh, you know a dictatorial uh, a tendency or manifest dictatorial tendency on the commissioner and the way to go about it is very simple they are the buying of the local community all the states of the federation have local government councils in each local government council tell them to produce credible intelligent men and women two per religion christianity islam Civil society, our traditional rulers should get involved. And what do we do? When you get them together, you let them form a board. They become the board council that regulate the activities of the police at the state level. All right. Then the police, the, 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 the governor and the commissioner, the governor is the chief security officer. He, the, 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 the commissioner takes order from him in day to day running of the, of the state. But when it comes to reappraisal for promotion, for, for discipline, for anything that's related to the well-being of the state police structure. It is the people that decide. And these people can sit every, every, every once in a week to decide what will happen in the police council of their various states. With that, the, 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 the chief security officer in the person of Mr. Governor will be handicapped. Mm. Because whatever decision you take with the governor, I mean with the commissioner of police, will be reviewed by the board. All right. Mm. Let's go on a quick break and while we return, we'll continue this conversation with Daniel Obadje, a public affairs analyst. I'll see you after this time out. Join us again. Welcome back. If you just joined us, this is the conversation reaching you from Kaftan's television studio here in the nation's capital, Abuja. If you just joined us, you've actually missed out on the first part of the show, but then you can still join in this second part as my guest on the show today is Daniel Obadje, who is um, a public affairs analyst. All right, before we went on that break, we've actually touched on some things, but then let's go to some other um, headline that we saw a few days ago where... Right. Um, where uh, the defense uh, uh, headquarters came out to say that um, the chief of defense staff came out to say that uh, um, deny any rumors regarding coup, coup yes. in Nigeria and then says if anything happens that yes. there will be legal action yes. and then he also stated that from his own end yes. from the military end yes. there is absolutely nothing like that I remember talking to a guest and then he said that there is no smoke without fire so where exactly is the coup? What, why do we need that information and where is it coming from? And then yesterday I was talking to someone and then they said, oh, um, all of a sudden we, don't, we cannot communicate at all. MTN was black. Um, Airtel went off. Glow went off. Everyone was just stayed in a state of inc um, no communication. So God forbid anything happens, you cannot communicate with anybody. That means... Uh, any any bad thing that wants to happen it can just happen in this kind of time so it means you need to be scared of uh, telecom uh, communication people but then i'll bring that question to you again mm. why do we ha why are we talking about coup or why is the defense staff uh, defense um uh, headquarters saying allaying any fears with regards to coup really like that um, guest i had that said there's no smoke without fire god forbid we're not talking about coup but mm. then why is that uh, coming up at all Coming from a military background, because my father has to be, to be a military personnel, mm. precisely Nigerian Army, and uh, uh, as God we have it, during Babangida's time, he retired. Um, like your guest said, there is no smoke without fire. Um, no news. No news is news until it becomes news. Something is happening somewhere. It's left for the defense headquarters to tell Nigerians what is going on. Have we said that? Mm. Uh, presently now, Nigeria does not need that. Mm. 
Mm. We don't need coal at all. It's no longer fashionable. Mm. Uh, the khaki boys are not trained to be leaders, but they are trained primarily for warfare. So, it is our submission, some of us, that they should please give democracy a chance. And again, we are in the one hand asking them to give democracy a chance. Is the, democrat, the democratic structure itself, are they, are they playing the game the way it should be played? With all the shenanigans that is going on in the country? And the fact that Nigerians are hungry? Indeed, there's no smoke. I mean, there's no smoke without fire. Now, uh, for some of us who have lived in this country and haven't been in the barracks with our fathers and all that, when the military begins to say soft things like that, as giving the movement of body language and saying there's no coup, there's, there's rumor, anybody, you know, parading such a rumor should be arrested and then mm. they will be investigated and what, there's more to it than that. But this morning I want to plead. We have only one country. Most definitely. And we have only one nation. Mm. And some of us are praying as a religious nation that we are every day that Nigeria as a nation will not witness what is going on in some of these countries like Mali, like um, Niger. We have enough problem to deal with already. If Nigeria should explode from coup, coup d'etat or whatever, there will be massive displacement of people massive and my pain goes out my pain will be with women and children if you look at what is going on in uh, in uh, in the middle east right now it's not funny mm. so we are praying yes let the government wumble and fumble we should pray for them to get on their knees and do the right thing that's what we are always we are, we are asking we don't want war we don't want we are peace loving people we don't want war we don't want COVID in nigeria let the military stay where they are and give peace a chance and give this democracy a chance. America had their democracy for 200 and something years. Even as I speak with you, they have not gotten it right. Anything, one of my friends once told me, said that anything that human beings are involved is complicated. And I said, how complicated? He said, yes, because there are divergence of views. And then for you to, uh, you know, articulate these views and say, yes, this is, you come at a compromise. It takes time sometimes. So please, yes, we can't rule out the fact that there may be something has happened somewhere. But Nigerians all over, where, wherever we are, both the military, the paramilitary, the civil society, we should all give peace a chance. Most definitely. Thank you. All right, we move straight to other stories and then we've seen how um, the... Uh, Daily Sun says P BVN and NIM Bank set to freeze account as deadline expires soon. And they will also see with the NIM and SIM linkage. And then we remember that when at the moment you have stampede already a, a lot of people yeah. now filled up in the yeah. bank or in yeah. the in nimc offices trying to get their sims linked and we remember a few day, months ago we, we were still on this same um, trajectory trying to fix our nin and yeah. our sims together yeah. Yeah. and then we recall how the former minister of communications at yeah. the time yeah. um that um it's a pantomime came out to say that um this will help to curb insecurity nip it in the board mm. but then we're still asking, how far did that even go? And now we're back in this table again discussing NIN with SIM linkage. Daniel Obaji, help us to um, um, oh, look back. at this. Mm. How, how would mm. li link your NIM mm. and then the SIM mm. stop insecurity? If it has not stopped it in all this while, why are we back here again? The stampedes again in the, the banks and in the NIM. The, 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 people, the people killing Nigerians, they are not in the street. They are not in the bank. They are in the bush. Hello? The people killing Nigerians, they are in the bush. Let our security agents go to the bush and come, and come the bush. And look for them. And get them off our back. It has nothing to do with NIA. How many data are we going to gather in this country? Sometimes ago, they told us during the Buhari regime, they said, uh, 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 administration, they said, look, once you register with your name, all your data is captured. One, you are now a true Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Two, because they have your biometric, the banks, if you commit any crime, the, the, the banks can assess their, your biometric from uh, 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 NIMS. 
Now they told us, the banks told us sometimes ago again that we should come and do our BVM registration. That once your BVM is registered, anywhere you transact business in the, in the banking sector in Nigeria, it will show. Mm. And today we are back to that. Like you asked, we are back to it. You see, when I had it, I laughed. And I see people running up and down, haters get that they want to link our BVM and our NIN to our bank account and also to our uh, telecommunication. Ah, I think sometimes ago we registered to collect our SIM card. And they said, if you don't go and register and have your biometric capture, mm -hmm. your, uh, your thumbprint, you, you will not be registered. Your phone will not function. That's the SIM will not function. The SIM will not function. Mm. I told you sometimes in uh, in the I think it was the day of the elections before I said this I said whoever did the magic of the mathematical calculations of the result of the elections presidential election that was held last year did a good job in fact if I were Mr. President, I would assign that person straight to um, what they call it now, Nigerian uh, Bureau for Statistics. He should go and work there. I said, Lagos State, that is the base of Mr. President. What we are told is the Asiwaju of Lagos. But yet he didn't win Lagos State stronghold of a man he didn't win Lagos State Kanu State where he had a sitting governor his power he didn't win Kanu State Akwaibom that is traditionally a state of the APC I mean PDP he won River State that is a stronghold of PDP even though we have a PDP governor seated there now he won Benue State that is a stronghold of, B of PDP APC one, and I said to my friends, I said, "It's a work of a great tactician. I love this man. Whoever made this calculation, give them Lagos State, give them Kano, they will take the rest. <laughs> Even give them FCT, <laughs> we take the rest. And then when they make their, their their submission, we will tell them that if the stronghold of the city present is." I mean, the whole stronghold of the president, Mr. President, is Lagos, and he's taken, and they did raise eyebrow. Kano, that is APC, traditional APC in the state, is taken, and nobody, APC did not raise eyebrow. Why, we want another state, and you have raised eyebrow. I, I clap for this man, he's a good tactician. When the government of Nigeria, and it's, it's, it's like that all over the world, the thinkers of government will tell you, the people are complaining, they are hungry, no palliative. We are trying to get our feet on ground. We are trying to do the needful. Why they are still complaining and they are on the street protesting and for us to calm the situation. Give them something to be concerned. To keep them busy. Oh. <laughs> give them something to keep them busy. And what is that? Uh, go, uh, you, can, you can conclude the rest of it now. Uh, oh, let like them go and link their NIN and their BVN to their account. And when they are busy going to the banks, we'll be buying time. <laughs> All right, because you talked about um, the um, 2023 election, let's go right. back to the 2023 um, election. We know that it's one year after um, that election and all that happened during the, especially the February 25th mm -hmm. um, general election. Mm -hmm. One year after mm -hmm. Daniel Obaje, have we actually learned anything? Even though we hear um, Aine come out to say that they're not um, pitching the mistakes or the errors on te um, technical error, even though at the time <laughs> yeah. we recall um, Festus Okoye saying that it was technical error. But now they've checked their, they've done their uh, equations mm. and saying that it is not technical error and then or technic there was no technical glitch or mm. anything as such. Mm. But then lessons yes. and all. Yes. Have we even learned anything at all? If, if, if you have learned anything, tell me. And if the people that says to us we have technical glitches and the election do not come the ways of Nigeria that we expected, and these same people are seated in nine headquarters in the person of Yakubu and the first of Sokoye, then what do you want the Nigerians to do? Should they be there? 
after the federal government gave them 300 billion. But first of all, it's not there anymore. It's no longer there? No, it's not there. What is, what is this man doing to uh, Yakub? That's why my brother, my sister, I'm not even interested in listing to anything that comes from my name. Not at all. For some of us, we don't. Because if we are serious, Yakubu shouldn't be there by now. If the same man who conducted an election, 2023 election, telling us it was a strict technical breaches, and Aneka is doing everything to put it in order, and he's not coming to tell us again that it's not technical breaches, then something went wrong. And that means what some of us also you know, thought happens, happened. We don't fire. The only thing we do here, paddy paddy, we hire. We hire paddy paddy. It's not, nothing is based on merits in Nigeria. Nothing. Nothing is based on merit in Nigeria. It's paddy paddy. Man, no man. <laughs> All right, mm. let's begin to wind down and um, finish this um, conversation right. as we take um, our last um, headline for this morning. It says, um, talks about one billion US dollars that, um, uh, from Afrexim Bank that will be going especially to cushion the um, cost of drugs. So I'm wondering how this would definitely help, especially those who have terminal diseases those who are suffering from diabetes from hypertension because their drugs are getting more expensive every day so if you have this kind of palliative coming forth or this kind of um, debt that was taken from Afrexim bank just to help build industrialization that's what they call it isn't that a good step in the di right direction daniel obaji let me use the Igbo palance that says yes. and Komere or Mekwazo. if you tell the king yes. you did well yes. he would definitely shake his head and then do more and do more but this king that we are looking up to to do well so that we can applaud the king the king has not given us the 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 the, the benefit of the doubt to say yes oh you king may you reign forever oh you king your people, your subject, are praying for you. We want more. Continue. And as you continue to pray, put smiles on our faces, may you live long, all you can. But I just reeled out some, some of the uh, policies. That, that is our problem. I'm going there. That is our problem. The, the, this thing, this, no, this currency called dollar, is our problem. Why can't we trade in our own currency and leave this dollarization of our economy? The dollar is a problem. When you mentioned one billion dollar, I, I said to myself, in fact, before the money gets here, it's already shared on the air. It's like the smell of dollar. Huh? <laughs> Give Nigerian elites and politicians a sleepless night. <laughs> before the money will get there, it's already shared. So all these things you're talking about, you will not see anything. Our hospitals are nothing to write about. The drugs that they are talking about, the manufacturers will not receive one couple. I told you earlier here about the rice pyramid we receive in Abuja. Buhari and uh, MFLA told us that the era of rice importation is gone. That all the rice, all the party rice will be given to all the millers in the federation. Nigerians can now mill rice and sell cheap to, the, to his people. How many months died the line? One year plus. Where is the rice? A bag of rice today is selling for 72, 70, 69, some places, depending on the location you find yourself. You told me here that, uh, what's it called now? Uh, Indomie. You're selling for how much now? 11,000. Indomie that we used to buy 1,500 per carton. Nobody, it has become a luxury. You can't eat Indomie anymore. Muro Gary. Who will eat Gary? Mudo of Gary. That used to be how much? 300, 500. Mudo of Gary now is 900 naira. Some places 800. So you want me to applaud the, 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 the minister? I, I saw it. I said, no, before the money arrived, it has been shared. Because dollar is our problem. Our elites and our governors and our minister, they don't know anything dollar, they don't want to hear it. Once it comes, <laughs> Is shared now. You talk about the in fact before we even cross to this, we are talking about the elect electoral thing. See, I said to myself, if you said I neck have done well, or they are trying to they say to us that this is not technical glitches, is the look at what happened in uh, uh, Edo recently, they can't get it right. You don't put an old wine in a new wine bottle, 
you can the structure of INEC as is constituted with Yakubu. Yakubu is our problem in INEC. Let that that structure be approved and di disbundled. Now, let me tell you, a day election, just primary, primary elections of the two political two major political parties. APC produced about I think I watched it three three candidates. PDP two. <laughs> Last night I, the the deputy governor of uh, Edo. Was at the PDP headquarters. They say the journalist asked him, "What are you here to do?" He said, "I'm here to collect my mandate. Really, give it to me by the people. And if the party fails to do the bid for, I will go to court." Then I said to myself, "What has this guy forgotten in the uh, house? After eight years with his principal, it's looking difficult for another ten of time." Annabelle, we wish that Nigeria by this time. We come of age that have come of age will find his feet on the ground in the commissary of nations mm. we pray that nigeria as a nation will get it right because if we get it right the rest of african continent will be respected in the committee of nations that's definitely a man can only come to your party when he knows that you who is hosting the party you are well prepared and you have integrity you are bringing the right people and of course, I tell seven is on the table. No man will come to your party when he knows that there is insecurity. When he knows that the guests that are coming to that party is going to be rowdy. When he knows that I tell seven will not be available. No man will come to your party. So how do you hail a king that is not remorseful, that is not thinking about the welfare of his people, even if he's thinking about it? Your actions will speak louder than words. We talk too much in this country. The little action, little things that they will do in other times and you don't get to hear about it, but you know the local government system is working. As I talk to you, a Nigerian is a mayor in London. A Nigerian. When the white right man wants his product, 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 you need to be productive. They talk about capacity. It's not about who you know, party, party. Hmm. Now, right. Mr. President is organizing, Nigeria is organizing a, 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 a meeting in uh, Qatar. For what? They said uh, it's a community. They want to discuss with the international community and see how they can bring investors. No. Take care of your home. Do the right thing. Take care of security. Let the people be fed. Let Nigerians be empowered. Let capacity be built. All see, right. the Nigerian people that I know, we can happen anywhere. If we appear anywhere, we are solution providers. Hmm. Look at you. Doing great things in in a media in a media platform. All we need is a little push mm. and the and the right atmosphere to deliver that which God has given to us as a bundle of talent to excel anywhere in the world. That's definitely. We check the musical big board all over the world today. Our our boys are doing great. The, the, the likes of Bonner Boy, Davido, and Co. Whiskey. They are in the top charts of all uh, you know music today. If you talk about spirit, our, our religious circle. The white brought Islamic to us. They brought uh, Christianity to us. But today, Nigeria is a force to reckon with when it comes to religiosity. If you go to science and technology, we are also playing our part. When the vaccine for COVID-19 was delivered in the U.S., a Nigerian doctor participated in it. Nigerians are doing great things everywhere. Kojo Wela is doing great things in the WTO. We can do it. All right. We can make good happen here in this country. All right. Let us remove greed. Let us remove this this impunity. Paddy paddy. Now my paddy I know. Now me and them go chop. Make we come on this ability, this attitude of chop, chop. Come and chop. It's your time. It's my time. If I know chop, you know go chop. It is our time to chop. Let us remove that. All right. And be our brothers keep and do the needful because the own ge the generation after us. Let them bear the good record of us. That ah, during their time they built Nigeria and here we are enjoying the benefit. Hmm. Please, it's a vote to a thought. And please, we should all continue to pray. We should not give up on Nigeria because this is the only country we have. Some of them we have dual citizens. When it happens here, they will travel and leave us alone. Please, Nigeria should remain peaceful. Peace, I preach. That's a fine place to leave the conversation. Thank you so much, Bodani Lobaje, um, public affairs analyst. It's, it's a, a pleasure having this talk with Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, viewers, that's where we end this conversation for today. Remember what he said always work with peace and plead for peace just with this our nigeria yes. we are one and no matter what we do this our own
we must protect it. All right, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Annabelle Oji. God bless you and yours, and God bless Nigeria.